Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm playing with another Invoked variant. This time specifically, Cyber Dragon Kaiju Invoked. Cyber Dragon Galaxy Kaiju Invoked. There's so many little tiny packages of engines in here. There's the Galaxy Soldier engine, there's the Kaiju package with Interrupted Kaiju Slumbers, as well as the natural synergy that Jizakiru has with the Cyber Dragon deck, and then there's the Cyber Dragon engine itself, and then there's the Invoked engine. So, like, basically four completely <laughs> separate packages all put into this deck, but... So, my opponent is playing Wind Witch Invoked Artifacts, so a nice solid deck, a nice solid pick for uh, for the format. But unfortunately for him, because I'm able to just like go second very uh, very effectively, my deck is very built towards going second and just trying to kill him, and I draw Max C, which is a very good card to have in my opening hand when I'm dealing with going second. But So, I just go straight over his clear wing with my Jizukiru, and he's got two back row that I don't know what they are, but at this point, my hand is very set to blow. It's rigged to explode at this point. Like, there's so many different things that my hand has capable to it as far as uh, as far as play lines that I can do. But so summoning the Cyber Dragon, trying to activate my Magic Meltdown, it gets Cosmic Cyclone. Going for a Galaxy Soldier play into Cyber Dragon Nova because I can use Nova to extend my ceiling. I can get over the Jizakiru as well. I can also just contact away with the Jizakiru at any point if I want to, but now he makes a mistake and strikes my Cyber Dragon Nova, which at this point I was kind of expecting something along those lines being the other trap. It was either that or something like Artifact Sanctum for Moral Attack or something. Something that would not prevent me from winning the game because of the fact that Cyber Dragon Nova can float into another fusion, and because of the Galaxy Soldier being on the board, it just allows me to just, you know, make another Nova and continue with my <laughs> with my original uh, course of action, but Rampage Dragon coming in here for the OTK with Cyber Dragon Infinity under Max C just in case he does play something like Swift Scarecrow or Battle Fader or something like that, the Cyber Dragon Infinity can negate it, but this is well over game. Now, I should take some time to actually uh, discuss that I really like how the Invoked cards mesh with the Cyber Dragon deck. One, because it gives it a good normal summon and a good starter card in the form of a Laster. Uh, a Laster is a really strong card as far as what it allows you to do, and is as well as with the Invoked Engine and the Kaiju Engine, like, even if you're not trying to kill your opponent, you can actually slow the game down to a bit of a slower, more grindy pace while you're gathering up resources before you just shut the game out. The deck very much threatens you at any point to just shut the game out out of nowhere with Cyber Dragon plays. But even if you don't have access to these cards, as long as you're able to make plays with Kaijus in the Invoked Engine, you can play a slower paced game and it actually doesn't really hurt you that much because of the quality of cards that you have access to off of the Invoked and Kaiju engine, as far as removal and dealing with things goes. And now, a Laster is also just an amazing, amazing card for extending the reach of OTKs with the Cyber Dragon stuff, because you can make Rampage Dragon, and you can discard a Laster at any point during your turn to make Rampage Dragon bigger, or any of the fusions for that matter. And so that allows you to like get some good choice Invocation plays going on, because as you'll see in the deck list at the end of the video, I only play one copy of Invocation, and I drew it game one, so it was kind of weird because my Elaster wouldn't have been able to you know, be summoned and search for it. But, because I have access to Elaster being able to discard itself, I could put Elaster in Grave and then use Invocation, and it would be really, really good from there. But, so from here, I'm going second again, and I max see him, and he doesn't really decide to invest too much into it because he saw that I played Kaijus, and from there, there's not really a lot that I'm really able to do <laughs> as you can see I just twin twister try to hit the two back row and hope that it's not something that I have to horribly deal with but it ends up being dimensional barrier and artifact sanctum for scythe so it's just like ah not really gonna be able to do anything here big man I think like it's just it's not it's not something I'm gonna be able to do because I'm locked out of my extra deck and so the most I can do is maybe use cyber dragon core to get repair plant and then let it die but I could easily just die because I'm at 7500 um, and I know that he has an Elaster, so if he plays the turn structure correctly, he should just kill me this turn. Uh, so that's that was a thought that was going through my mind. But, man, this deck just, I can't say enough good things about the theory of how this deck operates. I love the theory of this deck, especially when it comes to interactions like Magic Meltdown, like what Magic Meltdown provides for the deck. You can put Magic Meltdown on board, and Magic Meltdown makes it to where your opponent cannot respond in the summon response window of a fusion monster being summoned. Now what this means is you can put Magic Meltdown on the board and then Overload Fusion or something for Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon and use its effect to blow up back row and if those back rows are things like Solemn Strikes and whatnot, then they can't be activated because of Magic Meltdown. <laughs> so like that's an insane interaction uh, that the deck allows you to have. Like you can just Heavy Storm your opponent 
or like basically more akin to like Dinko Seca Heavy Storm. Like it's it's an insane interaction that you have access to. But game three, I open Max C again. I mean, my deck is built to go second, so I mean there. There's, there's definitely tons of cards in it that are good for going second, be it Kaijus, be it Maxis, be it the Cyber Dragon cards in general. Uh, so, I mean, just kind of holding the Max C here to see what uh, seeing what happens, and I'm, uh, I'm specifically holding down A so that it gives me a response window on literally every action he does, so that it sort of disguises the Max C. At least I think so. I think that's what it, like, I think that's, uh, I think that's a correct thing to do, is like disguising it as it could be like any hand trap, like Ghost Ogre, or Max C, or just anything that could be discarded at any point, but... I digress, but so I max C for the one for one. Um, I drop the max C in response to invocation, and he just decides to banish it and make his uh, make his bigger dude instead of uh, using a card out of his own hand, which is an arguably correct line of play. And so at this point, I kind of blank out as far as uh, as far as what I have access to, and I think that I have access to Jizukiru, but it turns out it's the Thunder Kaiju, it's Thunder King. And I'm just like, oh shit! I just summoned Dre, <laughs> I just summoned Doctor Dre, and he's gonna get eaten by this Kaiju. Uh, and it's going to be a problem. And so I drew the invocation, and I've got triple Elaster in hand. So at this point, I'm just kind of kind of consigning myself to defeat on this one because of the fact that I don't have access to any of my Cyber Dragon stuff. But at the same time, like I already previously said, if you have access to the Kaijus and the Invoked Engine, you can typically play a slower-paced grind game. And my opponent apparently has no access to any back row whatsoever because it would have been set the previous turn. So at this point... My my opinion of this game starts really you know going up and up in terms of uh, in terms of how I think I can handle this game, especially when he's only doing things like making Rygens. But so he summons his Rygen, recycles his Elaster back to his hand, puts his Invocation back in his deck, attacks with the Thunder King Kaiju, then attacks with Rygen, and he starts doing this play line that's incredibly suspect and strange to me, but uh, something that I feel like I could take complete advantage of, and that is that he uses Rygen to flip the Kaiju face down so that I can't special summon my own kaijus from hand to my side of the field. But, because the kaiju is now face down, that means I can give him another kaiju. And so, this is this is something that I try to take advantage of in a wholehearted, like, situation. Like, I try to formulate in my mind how I'm going to take advantage of the fact that he keeps putting kaijus face down. Uh, but it ultimately doesn't really come into fruition because I'm mainly spending most of my time trying not to die. But so, I summon a Laser, uh, get Invocation, play Invocation, and he chains Sanctum, which summons Scythe, but Scythe is then being summoned in response to the uh, to the Fusion Monster being summoned, and thusly it can't activate its effect. So that's a key little thing there. And uh, from here, I'm able to just attack and do things with my uh, Makaba that I just stuck on the board because of my Dre being in Grave. And so, Makaba, or Makaba, excuse me, I'm putting an R in there because that's its OCG name, or its OCG translated name. I use it to attack into his uh, Raijin, and then I use my Elaster in response to his Elaster so that I win the power struggle here. And at this point, he doesn't have any information on how many Elasters I have in my hand, so I can definitely just keep this, like, knowledge to myself. It's very, it's very easy. And so, I decide here that I'm going to Kaiju over his Scythe, because with the Gamma Seal face up, he now cannot flip up Thunder King to be bigger than Makaba. He can't flip it because of the fact that you can only control one kaiju. You can't attempt to summon a kaiju in any way, whether it be flip summon or otherwise, unless there's no kaiju on your side of the field. And so I gave him that gamma seal, so now the Thunder King is lying, is literally locked down um, in terms of it being face down. So I use my negate with Makaba on his Elaster, banishing it, which I think is arguably correct, and then he instant fusions for Raijin uh, and uses it to flip my Makaba face down and then attacks over it with the gamma seal. And so at this point, I debate on whether or not I want to use the Elaster in my hand to pump the defense of Makaba, uh, but ultimately just decide that Nas, there's really no point in that, especially since his Raijin is going to be dying at the end phase anyway off of the instant fusion. It's not something I have to deal with on my turn. Uh, but so my turn comes around, and so like I said, it's just I had access to Kaijus and the Invoked Engine, so I'm able to grind. Um, and so from here, some of my Elaster get Invocation again, and I debate on whether or not I want to banish his Elaster from his graveyard, uh, but I decide on banishing my Elaster so I can recur the Invocation, and then banishing his Scythe as the Light Monster. But so from here, here's where I get him with the Kaiju Spice. Is I debate what I want to do here, and I end up deciding to use Makaba to attack his uh, face down Thunder King, because what that would instigate there is that the Thunder King would flip face up in da at the beginning of the damage calculation, and since you can only control one Kaiju, the Kaiju that is not being battled with will automatically destroy itself because it is the kaiju that is not having any action partaken 
to it. So, the Gamma Seal automatically dies, and then the Thunder King dies by battle off the Makaba. And so it's just an interesting little interaction that I got to do there to just kill the board that I gave him with the Kaijus, and ultimately just uh, just be in such a strong position in this game. And so I just keep negating his Elasters with Makaba, um, discarding the Galaxy Soldier. And he uses Warning on my Elaster that I summon, the, the next Elaster, because I've just got multiple Elasters just piling on, piling on pressure over and over again. And I've got Overload Fusion in my hand, so as soon as I draw anything like Cyber Dragon related, my, my turn structure is incredibly high because of all of the Makabas that are now in my graveyard. Uh, because of, you know, them being machines for Overload Fusion. I could definitely Overload Fusion into something, uh, something worthwhile there potentially, or just draw more Cyber Dragon cards. Uh, but from here, the game is just pretty much well too far in my favor. Uh, because of the fact that I do have a spell negation in hand with Makaba, and then I have, you know, him at 200 life, and he's got Ice Bell only um, in his hand that he just searched, and I'm just going to kill him the following turn because of the fact that he's at 200. So, just a little grind game that didn't really focus on the Cyber Dragon stuff in, in any way, shape, or form, and got to do a little bit of spicy nonsense with the Kaiju interaction that, that I felt like I was definitely going to be able to take advantage of as soon as he started just Book of Mooning his own Kaiju so that I wouldn't get one. I was like, oh, alright, well this makes it kind of weird. I can just keep giving him Kaijus and then I can set it up for just a massive board wipe um, in some way, shape, or form. If I definitely had access to more Kaijus, I probably would have just kept trying to slow roll, give him a Kaiju every turn and have him Book of Moon them <laughs> because that would have been like the best way to interact with that. And especially since I gave him the Gamma Seal and it locked him out of that gigantic body that I gave him and gave him a Gamma Seal instead. Like it was all just really good and really clutch in terms of, uh, in terms of how the interaction worked as well as the fact of how they operate with clearing themselves. But I digress. I really like this deck a lot. I really like how you basically have a really high OTK ceiling, a really high damage ceiling. Uh, the sky is essentially the limit. And then you can also, like you just saw, play really slow and methodical games if you don't have access to any of those really explosive cards. You still have access to a consistently good engine for applying pressure. Two of them, in fact, in the form of Kaijus and invoked so anyway i know what i want to know what your guys' thoughts are on this deck in the comments down below and all that sort of nonsense uh other than that thanks for watching like comment subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do links are in the description to my facebook and patreon page if you want to get in on some monthly giveaways i'm going to be doing for the uh, patreon page uh giveaway for people that uh pledge to me then definitely go check that out and get some information in the reward tiers as well as if you want access to my personal discord server where i get the people that i'm playing with for these games then you could definitely go check that out as well i'm not sure what the giveaway for this month is going to be yet uh, because the raging tempest one the uh, signups for that ended because it is now march but uh but I will have to figure that one out uh, pretty soon and shortly. But anyway, that's neither, neither here nor there. If, if you want to support me and make things for the channel in the future possible, uh, or at least help with that, then you can definitely go check out the Patreon page. But other than that, like, comment, subscribe, as I've already said. Links are in the description to those things if you want to check them out. If you don't, all's fine and good, all's fair. Uh, but other than that, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. And basically, just tell me anything that you think about the deck and all that sort of nonsense. But other than that, Thank you for your time, and take care, guys. I will see you in the next video.